Welcome to Geek Banter. This is episode number six. I'm David Baldwin. I'm Mark Selby. And we're back after an extended holiday break. We've got some great things in store for 2017 and beyond, so come geek out with us. This week, of course, we are geeking out about the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo's big presentation was just the other night, and the link to the video will be in the description if you haven't seen it. And it blew us away, as I'm sure it blew most of you away. Uh, We do have a couple reservations, though, so we'll get into the pros and cons later. Uh, After that, we'll have another edition of Indie Love, starring El Marvo, a comic about a luchador in Fallout? Kind of. If you dig the show, subscribe on Vidme and YouTube to keep up with What's Geek This Week. We're on Facebook and Tumblr, at Geek Banter, and on Twitter, at Geek underscore Banter. Follow us. So, we have a lot to talk about here, and oh a my god. A ton to talk about. A ton to talk about. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, a lot of it, we're going to fanboy out a lot. We briefly considered naming this uh, Davy and Mark just jizz all over for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a family show, so we didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> so... Uh, of course, you know, we're really excited to talk about the games first, but I figure let's get the other stuff out of the way first, and then we can spend some time on the games and rant. So first, let's talk about the controller, the Joy-Con controllers. That Joy-Con, though. Fuck yeah. I just know that there's going to be so many people bitching about how it's not a normal controller again. <laughs> but the nice yeah. thing is, is it's... It's gimmickiness isn't, um, it's not, the games aren't dependent on it, or, you know, it, it's not a, a, it's not like the Wii where it was motion control was everything, and then everything else was a, a afterthought. Uh, you can play it just like a normal controller, just fine. There's right. nothing wrong with that. Um, the extra stuff is just, extra stuff and they're making games to go with that extra stuff yeah and uh i mean they have a a normal controller for it that you can get separately Mm -hmm. i mean yeah people are gonna bitch about that because now they have to pay extra for a normal for like a normal looking controller but but you get what you get i've always said you know if you want it it's there and it's actually if i don't know if you've seen the prices for the accessories but uh right now the Pro controller is cheaper than buying a new set of Joy Cons. Yeah, which kind of makes sense because it—I don't think it has all the stuff that the Joy Cons have, because those little fuckers are packed. Yeah, they have all with crazy of tech. Shit. I think the the Pro is just for like your typical game, like your uh, Legend of Zelda um, stuff like that. Not 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 any of the cool shit that they want to do with like um. One of the games featured was ARMS. Um, yeah. That one is very Joy-Con dependent. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think it. you can... You could probably play it... Didn't they show that you can play it with the normal controller if you want to? Or, you know, just on the yeah, screen if you want to? But I think the Joy-Con makes it more viable because, like, you could keep one hand back with one Joy-Con for a guard while you throw the other one. You can't really do that with the uh, the yeah. Pro, it, unless it's like a button combo thing. But where's the fun in that? Exactly, yeah. You know, um, that... Well, we'll get into ARMS later. But, um, <laughs> uh, so some of the features of the... Well, not some, but the features of the Joy-Con, um, one that I, I think is really cool is... Uh, the HD Rumble. Yeah, um, the new Rumble pack that they have. Yeah, it's you know basically haptic feedback, right? In the um in the Joy-Con, uh, and I watched a promo of um Game Informer. They played the demo of One Two Switch, which is the it's their Wii Sports this time around. Yeah, their Warrior Wear. Yeah, it's showing off the the tech, and 
the um one of the games is fucking weird you milk a cow <laughs> yeah, i saw that <laughs> <laughs> and it's it, uh, it's just such this like shake weight motion that you're doing it's like milk that cow um <laughs> <laughs> gross yeah uh <laughs> but uh the haptic feedback i guess you know in the presentation they he showed that you can uh it simulates the the sensation of holding a glass and putting ice in that glass and then filling it with water and uh feeling the water swish around and stuff like that yeah which and, when he was doing that i was like that's trippy as fuck it is and um I hope it's that good. Uh, but the the guys on Game Informer they were saying that you know one of the the games is you pretend the the Joy-Con is like a a box and it has a certain amount of marbles in it and you roll the thing around and you try to guess how many is in it and you, oh against your opponent God. see who's and they were saying like yeah like it rumbles when you turn it different ways but it's not it's not as authentic as they're making it seem like it's it's not. So it seems like that the the technology is there, you know, uh, but I just think it's, it's fucking badass that they're taking such a, you know, rumble is such a, um, an instilled feature in, in everything now. Um, yeah. you know, controllers just, they can do it, you know, without thought and they're trying to improve on something that everybody's just kind of accepted. And didn't they invent Rumble with the Rumble Pack? Yeah, with N64. Yeah. yeah, dude. So they're taking their own inventions and improving upon them, uh, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. What the fuck else can that thing do? Oh yeah, uh, each one will have a like a a sensor on it um, that detects motion, and uh, it can detect the other controller across from it. I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess that you can you can play one two switch just facing each other, yeah, not facing a screen what, at all. That's what they want is you to be facing your opponent, not looking at the screen. Yeah, and you get the the game communicates to you through the controller with yeah. Audible and and it'll vibrate with you know the the HD Rumble, um, which it, it's a built in party game. Yeah, it's you know that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And thank God they included those straps because it would be another disaster again, people doing that uh, quick draw <laughs> game and just flinging it across and whacking your friend in the eye. Breaking your fucking TV with the Wiimote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, you know, don't drink too much and play this because you might fling it right into your face. <laughs> yeah. Whack! God, and there's, there's just, you know, another thing that impressed me is how much stuff is coming with the Nintendo Switch. Uh, just related to the, you know, the controller, it comes with the little dock things that, you know, protect the, the, the top and make the L and R buttons more pronounced so you can, you know, play the controller. So not only does it come with two completely separate functional controllers, they give you a way to improve upon them. Yeah. And there's, there is a lot of accessories that are kind of expensive for sure, but they're giving you a lot to start out with. They're giving you a, t- a bunch. Yeah. So when we're, um, I have to try and find it. I'm sure I'm sure I can find it if I looked on Twitter, but I saw on Twitter, someone did like a little breakdown of the cost of all the, all the things you're getting. And it's like a, if you were to buy them separately in store, it was like $500. Wow. Separately. Huh. So did he take like comparable Yeah. stuff and okay. And yeah, yeah it, 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 for 300 you're getting like $500 worth of equipment for $300. Exactly. You know, I guess we pr- should probably <laughs> mention how much it costs. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> so it comes <laughs> out point. March 3rd by the way. <laughs> exactly. So it comes out March 3rd of this year, 2017, and it's going to cost Two hundred ninety nine dollars and what ninety five cents ninety nine cents? I don't know. It's three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and now you know. I've... Ten minutes into the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It rhymed. Sweet. Woo! I'm a good host. <laughs> uh. So anyway, um, 
Let's see. Is there anything else about the Joy-Con you wanted to talk about? About the Joy-Con itself? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, it'll be in, it, one thing. It'll be interesting to see later on what kind of variations they come out with. You can yeah. buy like collector's edition of like, I'm sure they'll do come some kind of Zelda. They always do. And Pokemon. You know, the Pokemon. Yeah. When they, when they come out with a Pokemon game for this, which they will. And oh my God, that'll be amazing. Right. Oh, um, uh, there'll definitely be special editions. Um, so then, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, cause there's some controversy with this one. And this is, you know, one of the reservations that, um, a lot of people have, and I do too, is that the online service is going to be paid after fall 2017. Right. So from March to fall, so that's a good six months where you're going to be able to play, you know, online for free. But then again, not a lot of people are going to honestly get this at launch. Right. People are going to I get think, it. Later I think we'll on. be surprised. At, honestly, be surprised at how many, how much the sales are for this at launch. But it's yeah. not going to be like enough. I think to um, be super impressive. Yeah. And uh, I'm not getting and, it at launch. I wish I could, but I'm not. I hope to get it at launch, but I'm not going to be worried about. If I don't, I don't. It's not. That's the thing is is, I know that I can pick up. Legend of Zelda right away whenever I get it. So that's right. there. Um, I, I'm wanting to play it early, but it's not like I have to. Right. So, and Mario comes out later, which we'll talk about later. But so this, this online service is going to be paid. Um, we don't know any details about that, though. We don't know um, how much it's going to cost. Uh you know they've they they were a little vague on the details of their online experience this time around. Right. They did say though that it's um, from what I can can gather, it's not going to have the friend code system anymore, um, and there will be voice chat and game lobbies and stuff. Yeah. Which will be fantastic, and that's stuff that that's what you pay for with other. Yeah, you the, know, with Xbox the PSN and, and Xbox Live, yeah. So I get the complaining and the bitching about this because paid service sucks. It's you know we wish everybody could give that away for free, but in today's gaming, it's not you know, viable. No, it's not, not really possible. Not if they want. Not if everybody wants Nintendo to offer a serious online yeah service. Um, and then. There's another part to this. Um, they're doing, they're they're giving out uh, NES and SNES games for free if you pay for the service, with a caveat. It's you get to play it for free for one month, <coughs> and you know it'll be a rotating library of games you get to play for free, um, and then after that you have to pay for the game. Um, I'm okay with that. Yeah, in a sense, because I know they're going to add. They were talking about adding certain games will have new stuff that they've added to it. Mm-hmm. So I think I'll be okay with that, depending on the game. Like, because if if I download their free game and I'm like, ah, whatever, I can just not play it anymore. I can just um, basically get rid of it, and I don't have to pay for it. But then there's going to be like, oh, SNES, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, my favorite of the entire series. I'll buy that immediately. You don't have to give it to me for free. Yeah. Especially if you're going to add content to it. Fuck yeah. Bring it on. Well, on their, the, here's an interesting thing. You're talking about adding content on their, on their site. They say subscribers will get to download and play an NES or SNES game. Uh, in, and in parentheses it says with newly added online play for okay. free for a month. Online play. So, so dude, four swords. Yes, shit like that. There, if if the if you can if you're telling me that you could play, say for example on on Super NES, um, you could play like uh, Mario together 
you know, two player with somebody online or um, a four player. Um, what is that? Ghouls, uh, ghosts and ghouls or whatever. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, old school Bomberman, which there's a new Bomber Bomberman, which I'm so excited about. But we'll talk about that later. Old school uh, Bomberman was the shit. Yes. But like, you know, or um, like, what if you could play like old school Street Fighter games or you know shit like that online? Ooh, that yeah. would be amazing. But you know, of course, it's um, it's pissing people off that you're not gonna you're gonna have uh, the game for one month when PlayStation and Xbox you you get games for free and then you just have the game, right? Which the quality of those games is, you know, it's really hit or miss. Right. Whether it's a good game or not. Um, with this, I like what they're doing. I wish that it would be, of course, I wish that they would give you games for free, but I get what they're doing. They get a lot of money from selling their old shit. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, no. honestly. It I sells. Will, I will Why pay not? for the nostalgia. And this way, I mean, you get to... You get to test out games. You get to play old games you haven't played in a long time. I mean, yeah. In all honesty, a lot of the games I bought on the Wii, I would play them every now and then, but I never really sat down and seriously played them. Um. So if I want to, if I really like a game or if I want a game, I'll buy it. You know, uh, the one thing that uh, another stipulation people have, and I agree, is we should be able to transfer stuff we bought from the wii u over you know virtual uh, can which you not or um have they said if you could or not no you haven't been able to you could not from the wii oh well but can you, but maybe they'll fix that yeah that's it would be a wise wise decision for them yeah. um and i don't see why they couldn't it'd be easy because they they did relaunch their um, their Club Nintendo. Uh, they shut all that down, and they're relaunching it, or they have relaunched. I haven't really looked into it, but it's a new. They're I think they're wrapping it all into their online service, like Xbox Live or PSN, um, where you'll have a subscription and an account, and you'll be able to re-download stuff or, or you know transfer data and, and shit like that. I hope that's where they're going with it. Yeah. Um, you know, but if it's not very expensive, I'm okay with paying a monthly service if I'm yeah. going to use it. You know, that's fine. Especially it's not like be... these older games, I don't see them going. Oh yeah, we've added new online content. Shell out thirty dollars. I mean, it's still I hope the it's same not... old game with some new added content. I could see it being. Yeah. Like, I I could see it being cheaper. Yeah, for sure. They don't need to charge like thirty bucks for that kind of stuff, though. No. That really depends on the game. If they've added, if the, oh god, if they added stuff to like say fucking uh, Donkey well, I think Kong this Country, be, well, they wouldn't touch that game. But they could bring it back. I, they could bring it back, but they don't. They're not very cool with rare. That's anyway. true. <laughs> That's um, true. But no, if they added shit to say like uh, the original Legend of Zelda, which I think would be blasphemy to most gamers, but like, can you imagine how much that would sell? Yeah. I mean, what if they did, dude? What if they did DLC for their old games? I don't think they're gonna go that far. Yeah, I. I but that'd be crazy. That'd be yeah. Wouldn't that be re- insane? But I do not see DLC for their their uh, old shit. Yeah. Like again, four swords. I could totally see them adding shit for four swords. Which would be goddamn amazing, especially since mm-hmm. you could play on your Switch. You don't have to fucking no you wouldn't no longer have to have the four uh, Game Boy hookup to do that yeah. properly. You could actually do it online. That'd be fucking awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um so, uh, you know, speaking of Zelda and stuff, let's segue over here into uh, the games. Finally, let's Remember we got snap. geek out. We got snap, but they did, oh, yeah, they yeah, that's it. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, of course, first, we got to talk about Breath of the Wild. Oh, my God. Yeah, we do. Mark. Yeah? <laughs> I'm so excited, David. You have no idea. Well, go, man. T- take it away. I fucking talk about it. Okay, so they waited to the very end of this whole conference thing to talk about mm-hmm. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it was pissing me off. I was. They trolled us so hard. They trolled us so hard. So first I was like talking to like the uh, head of the European uh, Nintendo. Then they were talking to Reggie over in New York. Reggie started talking to um, uh, Iwata. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Iwata and another, I forget who the other guy is. I don't have that on the notes. My bad. That's my fault. But um, Whatever. <laughs> they started talking about, he's like, well, Iwata-san, when will... Legend of Zelda be out. And he was like, oh, actually, I don't know. Maybe you can talk to this other guy. This other guy was like, actually, I don't really know either. Hmm, maybe we should ask Tokyo. And that's how they segued back to Tokyo. And they're like, well, <laughs> first we're going to talk about this instead. And I was just, at that point, I was like, no, no, that's not okay. I was really, I was really worried they were going to be like, stay tuned for our, um, uh, presentation tomorrow. I'm like, fuck! Yeah, exactly. I was like, no! <laughs> and then they showed the trailer. And do we have a link to the trailer? Yeah. Good, because I you think. have to watch it. If you're listening to this, pause and go watch that trailer if you have not seen that trailer. That trailer made me cry. <laughs> I was brought to tears by how emotional and well done that trailer was. One of the best trailers for a game I think I've ever seen. Oh, absolutely. And I was like, I'm probably not going to get the Switch. I'll probably, like, watch the gameplay for Legend of Zelda because that's the only thing I really care about. No, fuck that. I have to have the Switch now just so I can have that (laughs) game. I have to play this game. Yeah, man. It looks really fucking good. And, uh... Oh, my God. And and they are, uh... They're... They're betting on this horse a lot they are really (laughs) yeah um and i hope it lives up to it i i want this to be fucking amazing it looks it it looks so good like they were talking about a while ago they were talking about how they took all of the negative comments that they got from um the their first one the the just the one before this uh Mm -hmm. and skyward sword skyward sword thank you the first one now in the series um, is this part of the series with that? The Breath of the Wild is now technically, um, a con- like, I think they said it was a continuation oh. from Skyward oh, okay. Sword. And okay. if it's not a continuation, it's it's um, right like the next one. So these will be the first two in the whole series. It'll be like the whole, these will be the prequels, we'll say. Okay. <laughs> but uh, they... I lost track. Oh, um, they took all the yeah. negative comments. Mm-hmm. They took all the negative comments, and then they fixed it. Apparently, like one of the biggest things everyone fucking hated was your little stamina bar that you had in Skyward Sword. Yeah. Everyone hated it. I was okay with it. Like I hated it, but I was okay with it. It mm-hmm. was a new element, so I was trying to give it a shot. But yeah, it was right. annoying. And apparently, it doesn't, doesn't look like you have that anymore. And if that's the case. Already a better game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I don't think there's any doubt that this is going to be a better game than Skyward Sword. In my opinion. I mean, uh, you know, I, I didn't even play Skyward Sword. And um, I was kind of, uh, what kind of pushed me away was the, um, I guess it didn't push me away. But you had the, with the Wiimote, you still had the, you know, the, the, the swing to swing yeah. the sword and, and stuff yeah. like that, the motion controls. Um, with this, it doesn't look like they have um, motion controls in your brain, and it's probably going to be an option. I will but, choose that option, because I had that for the Wii. I did that with the Wii, and I fucking loved it. Oh, yeah? Okay. But, I mean, I, it's not for I mean, everyone. sometimes it works. That's, that's totally cool. I understand it's not for everyone, but I fucking mm-hmm. dug it so much. Um, I'm... It looks... I know it's sandbox. Like, this is an actual sandbox Legend of Zelda. 
Yes. Which is insane. I've never even thought of a, like, yeah, that's always kind of been sandbox, but it's always has had a linear storyline. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like in this one, yeah. it will be just like, well, yeah, you need to do things, but you get to choose where you want to go, where you want to do it, that kind of thing. And, yeah, uh, exactly. It'll be more of a true, um, you know, world, sandbox, yeah. open world uh, environment. Yeah. Um, which I think the closest they've gotten to that so far was Wind Waker. Am I wrong? Yeah, Wind Waker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'd say Wind Waker. Yeah. It still had a pretty um, linear path, but um, it wasn't as linear as some of the others. Like, Ocarina of Time was very open world, but you had... Still very linear. Lin- linearly, or you couldn't get to other areas. Yep. So it wasn't really open world. Um, ironically, you know, the artwork and or the art in this, which is beautiful, um, has a very Wind Waker... Uh, yeah, it's like um, tone to it. It has that Skyward Sword watercolor pastel look with a mixture yeah. of that um, Wind right? Waker Celestine. Yep, and uh, it looks really well done that way. Oh yeah, um, Zelda has a voice. Really, they have voice in the trailer. She's like crying and talking to Link, and they have actually have a voice actor for her. What? Yeah. I did not know this. Yeah, in the in the during the thing, she's like crying, like I tried, I need to save them. They're counting on me, kind of thing. And she's like crying into Link's shoulders, and he's just like, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> 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 but yeah, th- that's part of the reason I started crying is like as soon as she started talking, I was like, oh, they gave Zelda a force. <laughs> <laughs> but does Link have a voice? No, they'll they better oh. not give Link a voice. They better never give Link a voice. He is, like, the non-vocal character. Yeah. There's two characters I think of with non-vocal, and that's Link and Cloud Strife. Yeah. Um, Mario, too. Fuck Mario. (laughs) (laughs) Um... You know, there's another character that uh, you never really, um, I don't know if you ever really talked in his games, but I, I never saw it. He was always very quiet, was uh, Crash Bandicoot. And then yeah. I was watching um, with my son, uh, Danny, we were watching the Skyward, the Skylanders uh, cartoon on Netflix, and Crash Bandicoot shows up, and he has the worst fucking fake ass Australian accent I've ever heard. It's terrible. And I was like, you might as well just not have had him talk. What the fuck? At first I got really excited that he was in it and I was like, maybe I'll start watching that show. But no. It's not bad though, dude. It's it's really um fucking Norm McDonald's in it. Oh my god, what? He's the bad. The bad guy is this like uh, kid that's like insanely powerful or something, and he has the voice. He has the voice of Invader Zim, <laughs> and then his he has this servant that's a goblin, and he's um, voiced by Norm Macdonald, <laughs> and it's awesome. Um, it's surprisingly good. You should check it out. Max might like it, dude. Yeah, um, we, we might have to give that a shot tomorrow. And it's it's short too. It's like maybe eight, eight to ten episodes, so it's not, you know, a big commitment or anything. Yeah. But anyway, let's. Okay, we're getting <laughs> off digress. topic. Um, so the, yeah, the, we were we were uh, still we were still um, we were still uh, moaning over Zelda here. Yeah. Um. So, one thing first. Legend about Legend uh, of Zelda before we move on. It's a release title. Yes. Now you made your pants. <laughs> oh. I did. <laughs> um. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, gonna be good. I have to edit that out. But um, it's. Uh, nobody. I mean, uh, of course, nobody's shocked that it's it's a release title. Um, 
they would be stupid not to have it as a release title. Right. I but I kind of wonder if they were debating on doing this on release or Mario on release. Which is funny because doing Mario the other one for Christmas. Out like Christmas, yeah. Right. So they're doing see what they're doing. Usually they have a Mario one. title. Right, exactly. This this one they're letting, you know, uh Legend of Zelda be the the, the flag bearer here. Yeah. So which it's is kind of cool. Had time it's, to develop Zelda for a while and this uh Mario we just only now heard about this new Mario game. Yeah, exactly. But everybody was kind of um there was a uh there's a desire for both because you know with the Breath of the Wild, of course, everybody's been wanting it forever. Yeah, we've seen it already, but everybody's been wanting a new 3D, uh, truly 3D Mario. That's you know again sandbox style like um, Super Mario 64, 64, and Sunshine. Yeah, and it looks um, like we got it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so they're. The, it's smart what they're doing. They're they're releasing Mario around holly around the holidays when they know people are probably going to more people are probably going to buy it for the holidays than at launch. So, you know, plus they can put out special editions during the holidays for Breath of the Wild. Um, speaking of special editions for Breath of the Wild, uh, the first one, I mean the 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 game will be released with a special edition. This is ninety nine dollars. Uh, Mark? No, I'm listening. Okay, sorry. So I thought what you're you telling out me there. is I'm going to have to pay four hundred dollars at, at launch. Yeah, well, I'm not have, have to, to pay but more. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> have you not seen the special edition? I haven't looked. I, I did. I the hype train oh. has already flattened me. I don't need oh, more of it yet. I'm taking it in doses. Well, I'm about to give you another dose here. Oh, Jesus Christ, um, David. Hurry the fuck. Yes. Up. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's going to be two special editions. There's the special edition and the master edition. Uh-huh. So I'll tell you about the master edition first. So the master edition comes with a physical copy of the game as well as a Sheikah Slate carrying case for the Switch, a Sheikah Eye collectible coin, a Relic of Hyrule Calamity Ganon tapestry with a map on the other side, (gasps) and a 24-track soundtrack CD called The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Sound Selection. But the star of the package is a statue of the Master Sword. And um, I'm getting the Master. I'm getting it. mm -hmm, It's... (laughs) 130 bucks. I'm good now. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I might just buy that now, before I even buy the Switch. Fuck yeah. I mean, that's so much. The, um, just, the Master I, Sword. I want that fucking map. You got you to gotta open up the picture. Um, it's in the it's in our, our drive. Um, open up the link there, dude. It, it, the map looks amazing. The Master Sword looks fantastic. Oh, and the special Master edition Sword. is everything except the Master Sword, and it's a hundred bucks. You don't even know about the Master Sword, David. No, the Master Sword fucks me up when I look at it now. Why? Because of Skyward Sword. Oh. Uh. To make your sword more powerful, Fee. She's like the little spirit that follows you around. Like mm-hmm. goes like. I cried during Skyward Sword in this part, and uh, a lot of people didn't really give a shit because they didn't like the character, but I loved Fee. Like, at first, she was very robotic and annoying, but as the, the mm-hmm. game went on, she grew to be more human with interacting with you and became more emotional and, like, seals okay. herself away into the sword so that you can save the day, basically. And like sacrifices her form, and knowing that she'll never see you ever again, like be able to talk wow. to you ever again, and she like thanks you for being awesome, basically. And it was just like a really touching moment that made me cry when I was watching playing the game. Aww. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing and sad at the same time. I won't let you down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Well, a lot of people, I, I noticed a lot of people online are um, saying that this Zelda is looking to be uh, one of the best so far. That that she's, you know, already looks heart-wrenching. Yeah, it does. It looks fucking depressing as fuck. <laughs> Good. <laughs> David, we've been talking about this it's game about for 15 time. minutes. Okay. All right. We should move on then. Uh, so let's 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 talk about Super Mario uh, Super Mario Odyssey, which releases um, again during the holiday season in uh, 2017. His hat has eyes now. Yes, it has eyes. So would that? Um, so is it Super Mario Odyssey or Super Mario Oddity? Oh fuck! <laughs> I stole that from my wife. <laughs> no, it looks uh, interesting <clears throat> to say the least. Um, yeah, I can't help but think that I will laugh the entire time I'm playing it because Why? I laughed the entire time I watched the trailer. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's open world. It looks really cool. Platformer, open world. Sandbox. Mario doesn't need your goddamn platforms anymore, guys. He can just <laughs> throw his hat so fast, like a boomerang, and then jump on it mm-hmm. and jump off of it. Not only that, but it looks like there will be other uh, ways to use the hat. Um, I think I saw it like pull him to it yeah. or something. Shit like that. So, yeah, his hat is now... And it looks like his hat is going to be a character of his own. Um, <laughs> what I love about this is Pimp Bowser. Yeah, Bowser's trying to get married fucking, to uh, Princess Peach, and he looks like a fucking pimp. Yeah, <laughs> with his white suit. And his big-ass um, top hat and cane. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, uh, so in this, you know, Mario is... Uh, He's in a different world this time. Um, it's not in the Mushroom Kingdom. He's in our world. Yeah, well, for part of it, yeah. because there's there's other worlds he goes to. But yeah, at, at first at at first glance, it was it looked like GTA Mario. Seriously, you guys, he <laughs> jumps on a taxi and the hood gets destroyed as he jumps off, propels himself off of it. Yeah, I was like, what the? Because fuck, he's fucking Mario. Mario. <laughs> He ain't got time for your fucking cars. <laughs> um, but he, uh, you know, he travels around in, in what looks like a, a a top hat that's a ship, and he goes yeah. to like uh, different worlds. I'm thinking um, his hat is like possessed by an alien, and that's the alien ship. Okay. Oh, okay, that, that's that's a good idea. Yeah. Something to that effect. Um, but there's uh, one world he goes to. It looks like he's in a giant forest, and the and the forest looks beautiful. Looks oh, like yeah, it looks realistic. Cool. Yeah. And, and there's all these like old robots around him and stuff. Um, and so it looks like it's it's going to be Mario, but exploring new environments and um, new characters, and um, which I think is fantastic. They're Doing, you know, in the vein of Super Mario 64 and Sunshine, but not the same old stuff, which was one of the great things about Super Mario Sunshine was that it was new. Yeah. It had a lot of the Mario flavor, but, you know, a new area and enemies and and stuff. But I digress. Uh, This is exactly the Mario we wanted, not some, you know, new Super Mario Brothers 4, 5, 6, you know, fuck you, (laughs) herpeter. (laughs) <laughs> oh, you don't want... Fine, fine. We'll do Princess Peach then. Oh. <laughs> Why can't Princess Peach have her own game? Triggered. She has her own game. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Mario looks good. It looks great. Uh, yeah, yeah. It looks um, weird also, but I like it. It does look weird. Yeah, but weird in a good way. Yeah, exactly. Good weird, yes. Um, so let's move on to the next game in our little uh, docket here. Um, 
Xenoblade is Xenoblade Chronicles two or just Xenoblade two? Xenoblade Xenoblade Chronicles two. Mm. Um, so Xenoblade has several games. Xenoblade okay. Chronicles for the longest time now has just been one game by itself. Um, okay. I'm pretty, I haven't played all the Xenoblades, but I'm pretty sure Xenoblade Chronicles ties into the other Xenoblade games. I have played Chronicles, though, and that's so good. And we've been waiting for a Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for a little while now, and I didn't think we were going to get yeah. it, honestly. Didn't, and, didn't uh, Chronicles come out and uh, wasn't for the Wii? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were like when the Wii U came out, it was, and we didn't get it. I was like, oh, I guess maybe we won't get one then. And then now they're just like Xenoblade Chronicles Two trailer, and I'm just like, oh my god, I know where they're at. Oh my god, I know where they're at. Yes, <laughs> Xenoblade. <what?" laughs> at the um, same time, I, yeah. my wife is just like, calm the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so like we don't uh, got a whole lot of information on Xenoblade. Um just mm-hmm. the trailer that they gave us, which we'll have in our show notes, but um it looks super good. Oh yeah, it looks fantastic. It makes me I was interested in Xenoblade Chronicles, but I didn't get it, you know, when it was cheap, and then it became weirdly like like used the the used copies were selling for as much as a new game yeah. and stuff, and I just never picked it up. Yeah, because um, it was that good. Yeah, so I'm 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 interested in maybe checking this out. Um, I want a good RPG, and there's a surprising amount of of good. It seems like good RPGs coming out yeah. uh, at launch or near launch. Square Enix is throwing one out, uh, like Project. Um... It's like Project Octo. Hold on, Project Octopath. Uh, we've got a list of games here. Yeah, but, we have um, shit done. And then the, the the team from Bravely Default is doing another game, yeah. and it looks like a another two um, D with three D environments um, type game. Uh, let's see here. I'm only looking this up because it's a funny name. Um, <laughs> well, I'm glad because. Uh, the art that they showed for it reminded me of the old school Final Fantasy, and that got me really giddy. And then I found out it wasn't Final oh, yeah. Fantasy, and I was like, "What the fuck is this? I need to know." Yeah, it's a game. It's a game I'll be looking out for. Yeah, exactly. So it's Project Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler, and what the one of the things that was saying was that like every decision will affect your path. You know, they always say that. They always say that. That's usually not true, but I'm always hopeful. Right. They don't do that a lot anymore. Um, games used to do that. Like, um, you know, Torment and uh, yeah. Baldur's Gate were very much... Baldur's you know, Gate. Your... I mean, the first one that did that was in, like... Well, not, I wouldn't say the first one, but one a notable one is um, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, because it, I mean, it was came out in like eighty nine, and it has seventeen different endings. Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> gotta, uh, dude, think about this. Uh, Chrono Trigger on the Switch. I just thought of it. Yes, that's all I can say. Is, <laughs> yes, this is a family show, right? That's all I can say. Then yes. yes. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> That was a okay, joke. Okay, then swing. Um, swing. That's not even that bad. Um, anyway. So, uh... I was still keeping it family related. What's, what's... Yeah. What's, uh... So, the next game... Arms. Arms. Um, Arms which I looked, laughed when they... looked awesome, besides its silly name. Its silly name, yeah. Um, it's, it's basically... It's, it's kind of like... You know, robo bots or uh, uh, battle bots meets punch out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was fucking... like, robo bots? The fuck are you talking about? I'm oh, robots, battle bots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm super excited for this game. Um, 
you know, you use, it looks like the optimal um, control setup is using the, the Joy-Con separately, like your, like your uh, boxing. Yeah, like they're your fists. Yeah, and um, I guess this is another game where you'll be able to play face-to-face with your opponent. Which is going to be um, awesome. You can predict their moves while you're looking at them. Yeah. I just, you know, I would <laughs> worry about, again, drunk people uh, oh, over yeah. swinging I mean, and hitting each other. There's going to be people showing up, getting, needing new teeth and shit. <laughs> but that's oh, part man. of the fun, man. Yeah, yeah. Um but it, it looks like a blast. It's just a silly-ass game. Uh, that's You know, what it reminds me of is it reminds me of playing Punch-Out in the arcade. Yeah. Um, do you remember, it wasn't just, you know, you had two joysticks, but they were actually two, um, well, I guess they were technically joysticks, but they had, like, what looked like um, almost shields in the front of them, so you were holding on, right. and it looked like you almost had boxing gloves yeah. on. And you would you would punch that way. Um, it reminds me of that. Um, so it you know again another really fun party game, which I could see having a really fun online um, part to it. Right. You know online multiplayer. Yeah, that could be real fun. That could be a good um, uh, introduction to their to their new online exactly stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, if they could get if they could get really technical with it, make it really strategic, it could be a a pretty decent, um, you know, competitive game. Yeah. Uh, if you have different upgrades and and um, you know, you can personalize shit and stuff like that, or maybe even level up stuff like that. You never know. But uh, what was I gonna say? God damn it. <laughs> <sighs> This is going to pop up when we're on something completely else, completely different. But um, let's move on to uh, the last game, at least on the list, that we wanted to talk about. Uh, fucking Super Bomberman R. Yeah, dude. I don't know what the R stands for. We'll find out eventually. <laughs> but it's fucking, dude, it's fucking Super Bomberman again. It's, I, know, it's, I, haven't, uh, I haven't played Super I, Bomberman in like over a decade. Easy. Oh, dude, and yeah, me neither. And um, I used to get down on Super Bomberman. I had the, I had the um, controller extension thing that you plugged into one of the the controller oh, ports. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, and it added like six fucking uh, ports you can you can plug in, and we would have you know people over, and we'd all play Bomberman. That's awesome. And, I never uh, got that into Bomberman, but I oh I oh, did dude. love that game. It was a great game. So good. Um, but this is, uh, they're not doing anything, they're not, not, not doing any kind of bullshit new gimmick with it. It's just straight up fucking Bomberman, um, but it, it looks pretty and it's going to be, have online capability, which is what I'm most excited about. Right. Um, you'll be able to just you get wanna, onto you a lobby take with your, uh, seven other people. ponage to a whole new level worldwide. Oh, fuck yeah, that. And that could, and again, another, you know, big competitive, um, game. Yeah. Very, um, very competitive. It, Bomberman can get fucking, uh, very hectic and, and, uh, you gotta be on your feet, man. But I'm so excited for that, man. Um, that's one of the things I'm actually most excited about. Funny enough is fucking Bomberman. <laughs> I'm a simple guy. Um, but another thing I wanted to talk about real quick, these aren't announced games, but uh, I read an article from GameSpot that, that says that there might be some hope for a Metroid game and uh, possibly Mother 3 yeah. with the Switch. And this is, it's, it's, it's kind of a shot in the dark, but it is, this article I read, it does have um, Reggie uh, talking about in an article saying, yeah, basically, yeah, we get it. You know, we didn't announce a new Metroid and people want, you know, a new, you know, Mother 3. We, um, everyone definitely wants a new Mother 3. And I, def- I definitely want another Metroid. But I yeah. want them to take their time on Metroid because the last one was, I liked, but I liked for the story, not the gameplay, because it was the same old, same old. Exactly. 
And the last game they came out with was with the, the the Federation Force. Yeah, that was like that was more for the, the that, kids. That was more of like a a four person yeah. shoot 'em up for we need kids another three DS. We need another really solid Metroid game. Yeah, um, breathe life back into that into that franchise. Yes, it's it's too good of a franchise. To we like haven't had a, a Metroid game besides that Federation F since the Wii. Yeah, we didn't get one for the Wii U. So, but Nintendo is very good at revitalizing. Yeah, their uh, their franchises when they get stale. They fucking brought back Kid Icarus, and he was and it was huge. Right. You know they can do it, yeah. but he basically said, um, "Oh, I'm fuck." I just had the quote, but he said, um, he was like, I have nothing to announce right now, you know, here, but we are aware that there are some key, um, IPs that consumers just can't wait for the next true installment for. And he said, suffice to say, we're aware of it and talk to me in about a year and let's look back and see what's happened. So basically he's saying they do have, they do realize what people are, you know, what we want and they're working on it. So, um, I'm hoping that that includes an F zero, uh, Dude, we haven't had an F Zero in a long time. At least not that it came yeah. to America. And and I feel like the Switch would be an excellent opportunity for them to revitalize that franchise too. Yeah, because that could be a great game that you can bring to somebody's house and be like, hand them a Joy Con and sit there and play F right. Zero. You guys um, want to have? You want guys want to race and have seizures? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> turn on some metal, or no, better yet, turn on some. Uh, Dubstep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so, Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't, is there anything else to talk about with the Nintendo Switch? I mean, oh, dude, we could talk all night, but we're, uh, we're, uh, we're pushing it on time right now. So Yeah, I mean, we didn't even get to that. the third-party stuff. We're going to leave it with Yeah, we'll leave it with that right now. I'm sure we'll come, there'll be more news announced and we can come back. Uh, but yeah. let's... Um, Let's jump into Indie Love. I'm going to let you take that because you know way more about that than I do. Yeah, um, this is something I just really stumbled on. I was just kind of going through Twitter and um, I, I saw... Oh, uh, excuse me. I saw um, somebody retweet uh, something about a comic called El Marvo uh, from Hawk and Cleaver um, comics. And... It's a it's it looks really interesting and fun. It's about a um, a luchador vigilante. Um, what I mean by that is he dresses he looks like a luchador, but he's kind of a superhero. Uh, he's the main character, and the setting is a post apocalyptic setting. Um, that's why I say it's kind of like Fallout. Uh, you know, and and the. The place they live on is a, is a singular continent called Muck, and there's a dictator named Socrates, and his role is enslaved many, and they're using up all that is left of the land's resources on weapons, physically altered beasts, and super soldiers. <laughs> and, like, the humans that are still left alive are damaged or horribly mutated um, because of nuclear winter and, and everything. So it focuses on El Marvo, who was on a... Um, self-imposed cryo sleep and he gets awakened and he joins up with a pair of teenage heroes go get em girl and knuckle duster go get em girl that's awesome <laughs> yeah um and it's it's fucking it i read the first five pages because they put that up in a preview i'll put that link up on our description um you could just download it, read the first five pages, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's well done. Uh, the art is very good. Unfortunately, you don't see El Marvo actually in the preview. Spoilers. Um, but you get a good taste of the world and, and everything. So look out for that. Their Kickstarter is going to start in February. Um, I'll be following along with it and posting updates. Um, definitely this, this Hawk and Cleaver group... This is their first comic that they've done, but um, definitely some folks to, to keep an eye on. Um, they look like they're they've got their eye on some pretty good shit. Nice. So anyway, um, yeah, and I just kind of stumbled upon these guys. So um, 
indie artist, man. That's where it's fucking at. Right. Yeah. So uh, no, no weekly geek this time around. Um, no fifth edition oddities. We'll get back to that shit later. But you know, we needed to spend some time on the Nintendo Switch, and I'm sure it's not the last time we're going to talk about it because it's huge. Yeah. Um. So uh, we like to end the show each and every time with a quote. Um. Did you want to take this one, Mark, or should I do it? It's from Majora's Mask. Uh, you can do it. Okay. The right thing. What is it? I wonder, if you do the right thing, does it really make everyone happy? Child on the Moon, Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. Yeah. This has been Geek Banter, a production of the Bizarre Network. <laughs> a production what? of the Bizarre Network. Fuck. <laughs> Until next time, I am Error. <laughs>